So you may have just picked up a brand new iPhone and you might be trying to figure out how you can go through and set up this iPhone from the beginning all the way to the ending. Now I will show you exactly what to do. First things first, as soon as you get it out the box, I would probably recommend putting some sort of screen protector on this phone or a case. So remember to always do that. And no matter what iPhone you basically have, as long as it's on iOS 18 or below, you'll probably be in the same process. So to get started, what you're going to want to do is you want to boot up the iPhone and you want to go ahead and basically unlock the device. Now, I would recommend seeing if you have another iPhone set up around you. If you're coming from a previous iPhone, I would probably recommend just going through and bringing that iPhone kind of somewhat close to your you know, new one. So in this case, if I had my old iPhone here, I can go ahead and just see this little pop-up come up and it would make my setup process a lot easier. I can transfer all my data from my old iPhone to my new one and you can kind of go down that direction, but that choice will basically be yours. To go through the normal setup, you go ahead and you click on the language that you're in, as well as the region that you're in as well. Now this panel allows you to see the appearance, basically the icon size, the notification size. If you want it bigger, you can make it as large as you want to. It makes it a lot easier to see, but it does kind of make things look a little different. You can also keep it on default for now and change it later. Let's click on continue. This is where that panel comes up. So if you want to transfer all your data from a previous iPhone to the new one, you can just go through, bring your iPhone close to it. It will look for nearby devices, and then you can go and set it up that way as well. In this case, we will set up without another device. Now you'll also have your Wi-Fi connections you can choose from as well. So choose your Wi-Fi connection, and you want to go ahead and log in with it. So in this case, I will just go ahead and log in with my Wi-Fi right here. And then after logging in, you will need Wi-Fi or you will need some sort of cell connection to basically set it up after. Now you will see that there's going to be lots of times where you may just have to kind of wait it out for your iPhone to basically activate. Now, if you're also transferring your eSIM to an iPhone, you also have you can also do that here too. If your phone has a physical SIM card, you can also insert it at any point. We can go and click on continue. Now set up iPhone, again, this is going to determine whether you set up your iPhone for yourself or for a child or for your family. If you're setting it for a child or a family, click on the bottom one. If you're setting it up for yourself, click on the top one. Then you can set up Face ID. So your iPhone, if your iPhone has it, either has Face ID or Touch ID. So you have a camera system right up here that can determine your face. So in this case, I would recommend clicking on continue and setting up Face ID. For the basis of this video, we're just not going to have to do that because we don't really need it. So in this case, I would recommend clicking on continue and then going through and setting up your face ID for face unlocking. But like I said, for this case, I will just set that up later. You will also need to set up a iPhone passcode of some sort. So, you know, you can change your passcode from being six digits. If you click on passcode options. You can also change it to don't use passcode to four digit numeric code. We have a lot of different ways you can go and change it here too. So go through, kind of modify this, change it whichever way you want to. You can also change it that way. So I'd recommend putting in a passcode as well. Then it allows you to go ahead and transfer your data. So just like the previous page, if you want to, you have the option of transferring your data from an iCloud backup, from another iPhone, from a Mac or PC, from an Android, or you don't have to transfer anything either. So what I would recommend doing is seeing exactly what iPhone you're coming from, what Android, what phone you're coming from, and transferring your data that way. If you have another way you want to do it, you can also do it that way as well. So just know that if you transfer data, it does take quite a bit of time. So depending on how much storage you have, it might take some time, it might not, might not. It just depends on your particular use case. So just try keeping a close eye on that. And then you can click on, you know, whichever option is best for you. Then it tells you to go ahead and sign in with your Apple ID. Now, your Apple ID is your Apple account. It's going to be tied in with iMessage, FaceTime, all those things as well. So if you don't have one, you can also click on forgot password or don't have an Apple ID, and you can go ahead and set one up there too. If you do have one, you can just tap that into here and sign in with your Apple ID email. So that's basically that. It's pretty much straightforward. In this case, I will go ahead and just click on the forgot password or I don't have one. And I can you can also set it up later in settings as well if you don't want to set it up now. So in this case, I will go ahead and click on set up later. But you can also pause the video and log in with your Apple ID. Again, for your App Store purchases, you will need an Apple ID account to basically use your iPhone. 
but for the basis of this, you can set it up later or create one later as well. Now, you, these are the terms and conditions. I'd recommend reading all of them. I've already read them, but they just, you know, it's good to kind of know these terms and conditions. Now, for your update for your iPhone, are you somebody who wants to just have your iPhones and, you know, just your iPhone iOS update update automatically in the background? Or would you rather manually go ahead and update your iPhone? I'm kind of in the camp to kind of like basically only download automatically and not update my iPhone automatically. So I'd recommend probably going through and click on clicking on only download automatically. That way if like it won't automatically like restart when I'm like using my phone. So I would probably click on only download automatically. For iMessage and FaceTime, I would recommend keeping this on and enabled. So I'd recommend clicking on continue. Location services, again, if you want to use things like Find My or GPS at all, or no location services whatsoever, you want to go and click on Turn On Location Services. So click on the top one. I'm instead going to click on the bottom one, but click on the top one for your personal phone. For Siri, this is another big thing. If your iPhone supports Apple Intelligence, it will probably go ahead and tell you, you know, hey, set up Apple Intelligence. In this case, Siri is kind of like a, supposed to be like an assistant, but it's not really that good. But you can also just click on continue in this case, and then it'll tell you to go and set up, you know, hey Siri or whatever. So I'll just click choose for me, or you can just change the voice if you want to. Okay, that kind of scared me. I will go and set this up later in settings. What that does is just setting up hey Siri. So when you say hey Siri, it will go and, you know, kind of invoke a command. Now, I typically keep this off. So this is, you know, basically sending your recordings that you have within Siri to some random people in Apple or whatever that will listen to your recordings and basically like make Siri better. You know, they've been doing that for years and Siri is not better and I don't feel comfortable with that. So I typically will click not now. Now screen time is this cool feature which allows you to kind of manage your screen time better. So if you want to have a little bit more, I guess, of like control into how much you use applications, let's say you want to really limit it, you can turn on screen time and you can basically get, you know, put on limits and app limits. That way you can only be on a certain app for a certain amount of time. But in this case, you know, you can set up whichever way you want to. It's also just nice to turn on. It doesn't really hurt anything. And for iPhone analytics, if you want to share your iPhone analytics that are collected, you can also send that over to Apple as well. This one I feel more comfortable sending, but it's totally up to you. It doesn't change your experience whatsoever either way. But in this case, I can click don't share. Now we get to determine whether we want our iPhone to be on light mode or dark mode. So this is something that's pretty cool. So you can set your iPhone up on light mode if you want to. All the pixels will be light. If you want to do in dark mode, all the pixels will be dark. And if you want it on auto, I think based on the time, it will turn it on light or dark. Dark is really good if you're wanting to go ahead and basically, you know, keep it for, I'm trying to think, like if you're trying to like save some, you know, if you don't already have a preference, dark mode does save battery life. So that could be one thing to do. But otherwise, I think light mode is still pretty good when it comes down to it. Not too many issues there. Clicking on continue, you come back to your main page and then it says welcome to iPhone. So now you can swipe up and you are on your home page. So you basically just set up your iPhone. Now, if you are coming from an eSIM and you didn't transfer your iPhone, if you want to set up your eSIM outside of the iPhone you know, uh, setup process, if you click on the settings application, if you open up settings, there should be a cellular option right here. If you tap on cellular, there should be an option to basically go ahead and essentially set up your eSIM here if you don't already have it. So you can do that here. You have the add eSIM option right here. So I'd recommend going into here and adding the eSIM. So you do have that type of capability right there. And that's basically essentially all you have to do. You can set up your eSIM right there. You can use your phone as you normally would. And that's essentially how you do it. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, so then.